Hi everyone, my name is Vasily Linik, and today we're gonna take a look at integration testing in the REST API. Well, technically this video is still part of the Habit Tracker Minimal API Core series, so if you're interested only in the integration part, I will leave a link down below to the GitHub repo so you can get the starting point source code on your machine and follow along. For those of you that are following the Minimal API Core series, I made a couple of changes to the Habit API, however the video got corrupt so I no longer have those recordings, but I'll leave a detailed explanation of what's been done in the description below. It's just a simple rename of the solution itself. So without further ado, let's take a look at integration testing. Over here we have our Habit Tracker API with all the endpoint definitions over here. If we open this, we have a bunch of endpoints. Uh, today we're gonna take a look at creating integration tests for the create habit async endpoint. To get started, you'll need to create a new project and over here I'm using an unit test project with X unit and we'll need a project name. A convention that I picked up some time ago is basically using the name of the CS project that we are gonna test against. So in our case it's habit tracker.api, then add tests, then the type of the test themselves. In our case, it's integration. Create this unit project right now. And over here we have our first unit test, which can be safely removed. Next, what I'll do, I'll basically rename this to create habit endpoint tests. Because in this class, we're gonna test only the create habit endpoint itself. To get started with integration testing, we will need a couple of Nougat packages. Uh, the first one being Fluent uh, Assertions, which is my assertion library of choice. Next one is microsoft.aspnetcore.mvc.testing, which is a Nougat package that we're gonna use extensively. And last but not least, I think I need to update the microsoft.net test SDK to a newer version, which in our case is 17.60. With that, we have all our NuGet packages in place. Okay, so to get started with integration testing, we will need an instance of our Habit Tracker API. For that, we're gonna use the Web Application Factory class. I'm going to show it to you right now real quick. So private read only, Web Application Factory. And as you can see, it expects a type argument in here. Uh, many might use the program.cs, but I prefer having a marker interface. So in our case, it's iAPI marker. So I'm going to add this small interface over here and reuse it in our test. So iAPI marker, and I will need to reference the habit tracker API as well. So this one, web application factory. As an alternative to the iAPI marker, we might use as well the habit endpoints, but right now it's an internal class and we're gonna see how we can test internal classes in another uh, video. So for now, I'm going to use the iAPI marker for the web application factory. In short, what web application factory does, it basically spawns up an instance of our habit tracker API in memory and offers us the possibility to create uh, HTTP clients to connect to the said API. Next, I'll need to generate a constructor over here and close this one. We have our web application factory and we are injecting it through the DI, through the constructor. Uh, however, we do not want a new instance of the web application factory for every test that we are gonna create. So for that, I'll need to add an iClass feature uh, with the type of web application API marker. So we are using the same web application factory throughout all our tests. And with that said, we can start off with writing unit tests. So for X unit, we are going to use the fact attribute and now public async task. Now, there are a lot of different naming conventions that you might encounter. So pick the one that suits you most. For habit API tracker, we have right here. In the context that we have create habit endpoint tests, I'm going to use a simple one, basically given valid habit creates habit. Uh, what it does, it basically tells us the prerequisite uh, 
in our case, a valid habit and what the API endpoint should do. And in our case, it should basically create the habit. If you are familiar with unit testing or with testing in general, you might have heard about the AAA approach. Basically, first is arrange, then we have act, and then we have assert. In our case, in the arrange side of things, we will need an HTTP client to connect to the instance of the API that we are running through Web Application Factory. In our case, I'm going to create a new variable client equals web application factory create client. And I'm going to need a new valid habit. In our case, habit equals new habit. The name of the habit is going to be integration test. So with that, we have our arrange part done. Uh, next, we're going to need to act. To do that, we're going to use the HTTP client uh, post async method, I'm going to specify the path itself and then the habit. Uh, now it's not really post, it's post as JSON async. And I'm going to assign this to a variable where response equals await post as JSON async. And we will need to read the response from our request in our case it will be a created habit calls response content read as read from json async and we're gonna deserialize it to a habit i need to await this as well now in the assertion part we're going to use the fluent assertions library i'm going to create a separate video uh, where we will go in depth into the assertions library but for now we're going to use some basic assertions over here so First of all, uh, response, response status should be HTTP status code created, should be somewhere here. So this is the first assertions that we're gonna make. Next, we're gonna check that the created habit should not be null and that the created habit dot name should be the one from habit.name. Basically that the created habit has the same name that we provided. And over here, I just need to add an exclamation mark. Now the last part that we need to check is the location header. Is the header with a location to where we can check the habit. So in our case, it's going to be response headers dot location absolute path should be and now um, we'll need to specify API v1 habits slash and over here the created habit dot ID. Uh, now, if we put a breakpoint over here and just debug this integration test, we can go into the breakpoint into the code. So if I go to the next line over here, we can see that I have an HTTP client that references HTTP localhost. Uh, next, I'm going to go further, post as JSON, I get a 404. I see my mistake over here. It's not habit, it's habits. Now we have a 201 and over here we have a created habit. 3027 and the name is the first integration test. Next, we should go over. So the response is 201. It's not null. The name is the one that we are expecting and the absolute path does not match. Oh yeah. I will need a slash up front as well in my test. So if I run this unit test again, it should pass. Now an issue over here is basically the fact that if I open my Azure Data Studio and run a simple select query, since we've run the test two times, we have this data over here, which is not fine since we are not cleaning up the mess after ourselves. Uh, to do that, we're going to imply for now a simple approach, namely over here, I'm going to create a private list of integer and call it habit IDs. And over here, just basically habit IDs equals new list of integer. Uh, and over here, add the ID of the habit that we have created to this set list. We're gonna use this list to run some delete requests towards our API after running a specific test. 
for that we're gonna use the I async lifetime interface over here. So I'm going to implement methods, which is initialize the async and dispose async. Uh, this one is run before running a set test, which basically lets us set up things before we need before a specific test. I've seen people use this instead of the constructor, since the constructor cannot be async in nature. People are using this initialize async in places where they have some setup methods that they need to call in an async fashion. In our case, it's not really that important. So I'm going to just uh, return a task completed. For the dispose part though, I will need to first get a HTTP client from the same web application factory, create client method, and then Oh, sorry, typo here. And then for each habit ID inside habits, I'm going to call HTTP client delete async. And I'm going to specify v1 habits ID and over here as the habit ID and await this call, make this method async. Yeah, and now if I open the data studio over here, delete from habits, sorry for no uppercase SQL, but as you can see, there are no more habits over here. Let me just debug this unit test. So, so we have our habit with an ID 3029, run it, the habit is there, Next, go over here. So we have the habit ID itself and we're running a delete async. And if I go over here and run it once again, I don't have the habit anymore. So right now we are running a test and then cleaning up the data after ourselves in a very simplistic fashion, but nonetheless, it's a very valid one. In part two of the series, we're going to take a look at test containers and generating a new database for all our tests and run it there, then tear down the whole database itself. But for now, this is really a valid approach that you can take for disposing of the created data that you have. Uh, next, we're going to take a look at one last test. It's basically the validation part. So I'm going to need a new fact, public async, task given invalid habit returns problem details and I'll need this small part of the range. Uh, next I need only the part for act and one for assert. I will need the name for the habit since we want to have it invalid. What I need though is this line over here where we send a request to the service and then I'll need a problem await uh, response content read from JSON async and over here validation problem details and for this part we're gonna assert a couple of things so first of all response status code should be unprocessable entity then we'll need to check that the problem should not be null and as well that the problem that errors should not be empty. For the errors part, we might as well double check that the error that we received is the one that we are expecting. In our case, it's basically that the name must not be empty. So if I run this unit test right now, it's okay. So that was it for the first video. And in the next one, we're going to take a look at the web application factory and how we can customize it to override some dependencies. And in our case, we're going to override the use database and use a test container instead of the database that we have running right now in Docker. With that said, have a nice day, everyone.